the 1930s, as the movement towards self-rule gained momentum, the authorities became frightened by the spectacle and influence of carnival and banned the use of skin drums in the cities. The native drums were withdrawn to the hills and the urban poor cast about for another means of producing their rhythms. So emerged the so-called tambu bamboo, hollow bamboo, which cut in various lengths produced a pleasing range of tones. It is believed that the spiritual roots of Calypso stem from the rhythms of the Shauta and Shango religious ceremonies. In the Shango ceremony, the participants put themselves into a trance and they feel no pain. It's an amazing thing. Shango, of course, is a religion of Africa, and the chief god among them was Shango, the god of thunder. Calypso music has been greatly influenced by the spiritual reverie of the Shouter religion. And of course with the Shouters, in their ceremony you can see the European influence with their candles and incense and saints and statues of all kinds. Many go into a trance and begin speaking in unknown tongues. On Sunday night preceding carnival, all our great Calypsonians come down to their grand savannah to vie for the crown of Calypso monarch of the year. There's no such thing as old is but good is at carnival time in Trinidad. Every year, the Calypsonians who compete for the Calypso king or queen title have to come up with a new song.
Then Calypso is basically messages, political, social or otherwise. I like to tell Basil to try and kiss my upper thigh, but I just pull down my pride. If you look back into history and the slavery, you realize that the slaves have to have some way to express themselves, either by active resistance or by passive resistance. The Calypso became a form of passive resistance to them. In other words, it's a way of communicating from the lower and underprivileged classes, and it's a way of appealing to the upper classes. And I'm trying to get people to free their minds first. After fetting all night, we all tramped down to Independence Square at 4 o'clock in the morning to officially start Carnival. We call this Jouvet morning. It's from the French patois meaning Jouvet, the day begins. Rain or shine, you see thousands and thousands of people marching down these narrow streets, jumping up to the steel band music. This madness, you see, it gon' linger for the next two days. The most exciting art form in Trinidad Carnival is the steel band, which we invented here in Trinidad and were first made by using oil drums, which were thrown away by the United States Navy round about World War II. The tops of the drums can be so finely tuned that the players can play a wide variety of musical forms on them. The masqueraders are dressed in what we call old man. This is when we dress up in old clothes and raggedy costumes and we paint our faces with grease and mud. For us, this represents a change from poverty in Trinidad to better living conditions. About World War II, the scene was quite different. It was almost a crime when a young man played in a steel band, which was regarded as a noisy, low-class instrument. Today, pan men form groups with as many as 1,500 in a band. The Calypso singer and the pan man are closely related, in that the Calypsonian write the lyrics and the pan men play the tune. When they get together, this bring about a happy union and all sweet music fill the ear. Carnival fever is what you, is the, is the feeling you get after a whole year of pent-up emotions. This is where you just explode.